Hello, hi guys, it's Inamka4 here with the Day 1 Edition Xbox One 2013 controller and the DualShock 4 from Sony's PlayStation 4. We're going to be taking a look at some of the similarities and differences between both these next-gen controllers. Both these next-generation controllers feel very good in their hand, not too heavy and not too light. It absolutely boils down to what you prefer and what you're used to and what configuration suits you best. The first noticeable difference is that on the DualShock 4 controller, you have a touch trackpad in the center, which doubles up as a click down button, which is non-existent on the Xbox One controller. Either side of this touch trackpad, you've got share and options buttons, which replace a previous generation start and select now the share button allows you to record in-game footage as well as screenshots and share those online although you don't have a dedicated button for this on the Xbox One controller you can carry out their same functions via the menus within the operating system the d-pad and the shape buttons have the same design as in the previous generation however in my opinion the d-pad seems to be ever so slightly bigger with a significant click when it's pressed and I do like this matte finish triangle square circle and x buttons which have largely remained the same over the years underneath the trackpad you'll see a grill for a speaker which doesn't exist on the xbox one controller now this speaker comes in handy for example if you're playing a first person shooter and a bullet whizzes past your head you can actually hear that sound closer to you providing more of an immersive gaming experience providing the game developer has taken advantage of this hardware further down you've got the iconic playstation button now centered between the two joysticks Sticks. On the Xbox One controller, that Xbox Home button has now been slightly raised, still centered towards the top of the unit with a chrome effect to it. Carrying on, you can see a 3.5 millimeter audio jack for the headset, which essentially can take any earphones or headphones that use a 3.5 millimeter connector. Heading towards the bottom of the unit, you can see the proprietary connector for the headset. Notice there's no 3.5 millimeter audio jack, so you cannot use your standard earphones as you can on the DualShock 4. The two joysticks on the DualShock 4 controller have obviously retained their positions from the previous generations. However, they don't seem to be quite as tall as the previous generation. They're in fact closer towards the controller body itself, while the diameter of the joystick at the top seems to be bigger, giving more control and more joystick to actually get a hold of. You'll also notice that these joysticks have a thicker ring around them which has a little bit of give there so it's not quite solid plastic almost kind of like a silicone-ish material and that dome effect that was in the previous generation has now been reduced just to the center part of the joystick itself. Allows you for more control if you're using the center part of the joystick or even the outer ring which is incredibly grippy as I say with that silicone-esque type of material and has a, a good texture to it as well. As you can see, the joysticks are in a non-symmetrical layout. While also being slightly taller than the DualShock 4s, they also benefit from a triangular grippier finish right the way around the top, which gives an uh, extra element of control because you don't have to place your thumb dead center on the top in order to gain control accurately. Although the top is now slightly recessed, shaping more towards the contours of your thumb and fingers rather than being in a dome style finish like the DualShock 4s. As you've noticed on the DualShock 4 controller, you have a two-tone plastic finish. On the top, it's smooth. On the underside, it has thousands upon thousands of gray circular dots, which provide much more of a grippy experience after hours of gameplay. With the Xbox One controller, you also have a two-tone finish smooth on the top and a textured matte black finish underneath however it's no way as grippy as the PlayStation 4's DualShock. Heading around the front of both these units here you can see that the previous generation connectors have been replaced with more of a universal micro USB port. Above the connector on the DualShock 4 controller you can see a white triangular shape. Now this is the light bar and lights up various colors and works in conjunction with the PlayStation camera to see where the controllers are. On the Xbox One controller you do not have a light bar however this controller does interact with connect because there are two infrared sensors inside the center just above the USB connector. Both controllers have had their shoulder and trigger buttons revamped on the DualShock 4. The shoulder buttons are now more semicircle-esque with more of a, a click to them when they're pressed and there's less distance to travel to actually get to the trigger buttons which now have more of an angled finish to them and there's resistance felt straight away when they're pressed giving for more of an accurate gaming experience where previously they would just hit the 
casing straight away and no resistance could be felt. Something the DualShock 4 controller doesn't have is sitting behind these more larger and angled triggers and that is smaller rumble motors just behind these triggers. So for example if you're playing a first person shooter and you fire a bullet as you press that trigger you will feel the vibration of the bullet leaving the gun. Another example maybe if you're driving uh, within a car in a racing game and you leave the track and as you hit the gravel or go off road depending on which wheel leaves the tarmac first your left or your right trigger may vibrate definitely adding an extra dimension to immerse you more so in the gaming experience along the underside of the unit you will notice that the previous generation's bulging battery pack has now been merged into the main body of the controller where it houses two AA size batteries. Side by side you can see there are slight shape differences between the two units whereas on the DualShock 4 controller on the hand grips there's less of an angle of the hand grip itself it's more of a straightish shape whereas on the Xbox One controller the controller as a whole kind of has a, like a triangle looking shape where the hand grips are more angled out. As well as being wider the Xbox One controller is slightly taller in height as well and it's interesting that Xbox have generally gone for a slightly bigger Bigger design something that's more ergonomic and with bigger hand grips and Sony has not decided to change the form factor so it's largely the same sort of size but with ever so slightly larger hand grips there we go folks that's been some of the similarities and differences between the Xbox one day one edition 2013 controller and the DualShock 4 from PlayStation 4. As ever, any comments or questions you guys have got, hit them up in the comment section down below there. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video and you like what you saw. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe. It's also down there as well. It doesn't cost you a penny. And you can also check out some of our forthcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Have a wicked day. And we'll see you next time.